Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Kevin Connors. Welcome to another Read Your Genes podcast. We're going to go over genetic questions that you send in. So let's jump right into those questions. We have several for today. <clears throat> First one, are there genetic factors in Lyme disease? Well, one could say there's genetic factors in every disease. Are there, is, is Lyme disease have a genetic cause? No. Matter of fact, there's very few genes, few diseases that have a specific genetic cause. There may be pieces of the disease that, um, you know, make the disease, genetic defects can make the disease worse. Um, and certainly with Lyme disease, I was involved with a study a number of years ago now that there showed just a correlation with people with chronic Lyme disease and different sets of genes. But I've seen that with cancer as well. There's certainly a correlation with certain genetic defects um, in cancer. How much is that correlated? We don't know. For instance, upon one gene, which is a defect in um, uh, your liver detox pathways, in your phase two pathways specifically, are highly cor uh, correlated with different cancers. On one pathway, gene defects are correlated with Lyme disease as well. It has to do with the ability to detoxify. So if you have a, a lesser or slower detox pathways, a lesser ability to detoxify, a lesser rate of detoxification, you're certainly gonna be more susceptible to a lot of different diseases. Um, uh, biotoxins like Lyme disease, there's other genetic correlations with um, people with uh, more Lyme brain type symptoms. There's uh, genetic correlations with um, even the HLA genes, with um, people that end up having more sensitivities, food sensitivities and such with these diseases. But there certainly isn't a specific gene, oh, you have this gene, you are more susceptible to having Lyme disease because you have this gene defect. There's nothing that specific. Remember, most genetic defects, the, the, when a person has issues with that gene, it's more of an epigenetic um, concern, meaning that there's lifestyle things that they can change. That's a whole idea why we want to run your genes. Why it's wise to get your genes run is because then you can change um you know, lifestyle uh, factors, you you make lifestyle changes, epigenetic changes based upon, hey, here's your genes. You have a, a little bit higher likelihood of having these types of issues. You know, it gives you some incentives some motivation to make lifestyle changes. But um, there's not that many genes. There, of course, there's different diseases that are completely genetically um, um Cause, and there's a genetic cause to it, but most of our, you know, diseases or acquired diseases are are not um, don't have a specific genetic cause. There's just factors. Why do people get genetic defects? So that's an interesting question. That's up for debate. Um, some people believe that there's we develop genetic defects over time as a race um, to deal with different environmental things. That would be in the case of, you know, different genetic defects actually can be beneficial, like on the genes for dairy. If you have those defects, you tend to be able to break, to create more lactase, which is the enzyme to break down lactose. So you end up with less lactose intolerance issues. Um, but most genetic defects, are, we wouldn't say are necessarily positive ones, meaning that you know they, they don't create benefits. Most of them um, create possible hindrances to health. So um, from another perspective, that is that we develop genetic defects because of our environment. So we're exposed to different toxins or pesticides or chemicals that damage our genes. And then, you know, that so that could be a genetic defect that I've acquired, meaning that I was born with, let's say, 
what are called wild type genes, no defect in a certain gene family. And then because of my exposure to pesticides that when I was in my teens, that damaged those genes. Now I have a single allele or double allele defect. And now I would pass them to my children. So if I um, you know, had children post having a genetic defect, now my children will will receive that genetic picture from me combined with their mother, then the chance of them having a single allele or double allele defect goes up because of my defect. So we can we uh, then we we inherit genetic defects from our parents, and then we can acquire genetic defects from our environment. And if we acquire a genetic defect from our environment, typically some sort of chemical, you know, uh, you know, damage because of some chemical pesticide, you know, uh, environmental toxin, heavy metal toxicity or something that gets inside the cell and damages our genes. If that's an acquired defect, then we will pass that on to our progeny um, from that point on. What's the difference between a one or a two on a, the report? I think this person is looking at whether it's a single allele defect or a double allele defect. And I have some videos on this that help explain it, but quite simply, it just means that if you have a blank, there's 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 no nothing there. And on the report that we give you, I don't think it has a zero. It just says it's blank or it's a one or a two. If it's blank, that means you have the wild type, you don't have any genetic defects on that specific gene. And that's typically good. That's what you want. If you have a one, you have a single allele defect, you have a chance that especially if there's epigenetic factors going on, that that gene is not going to work quite as well as if you had a blank, if you had no defects. And if you have a two, that means you have a greater chance of that gene not functioning as well as if it was a one or a blank. Um, I don't ever want anybody to think that, oh, because I have a two on the MTHFR677 gene, now I don't make methyl groups and I'm doomed for life. That's just totally wrong information that has been fed to the public. That's just not true. It doesn't mean that that gene doesn't work. It doesn't mean that you're condemned to having problems. It just means that the chance that that gene works is less effective uh, is really what we're looking at. So all these epigenetic factors, when you look at your genes, like, oh, because I have these defects or I have a lot of defects, ones and twos in that family of genes, then we might be best to support that with dietary and lifestyle changes, maybe some nutritional changes. So a, a blank means that you have no defects. A one means you have a single allele defect and a two, which typically is what we would consider the worst is that you have defects on both those alleles of the gene. So there's two alleles in all your gene, uh, your genes that we're looking at and you want to have a blank but most of them. And it does stay in the report, you know, like for instance, on the the dairy genes, it's better if you have a defect because it's a beneficial gene to have a defect on. And there's some other ones that are like that, but it states that in the report. All right, thanks for being a part of our Read Your Genes podcast and we'll see you in a couple of weeks.